When I say cathartic, you say release. You ready? Cathartic, release. Cathartic, release. There we go. It is time for us to wade into the waters of unexpressed trauma and pent-up emotion as we unapologetically purge our suffering into the cosmos. It's time to hit the bed with a baseball bat, punch the pillow with anger in your jowls, and sob onto the comforting shoulder. At least, that's what we tend to think of when we have this idea of cathartic release. It's about purging, it's about purifying, and it's about truly uncensored emotional expression. It's an essential process of your self-healing journey, but there's a bit of a misunderstanding which I want to clarify with this video. We need to be wary of condensing our catharsis to the physical and emotional without being aware of the mental and spiritual catharsis that also needs to complement the full spectrum release. This video isn't an, ent an entry level understanding of cathartic release because you've already seen books that I've held up like The New Primal Scream by Arthur Janov and Peter Levine's work in An Unspoken Voice which go into the basics of somatic therapy and self-therapeutic understanding of the past and different traumas that we've been through. This is all wonderful and I will be addressing some of this in this conversation. But I want to take it somewhere which I don't see spoken about too often, which is a genuine, full-spectrum catharsis. There's a difference between screaming into a pillow and existentially screaming into the void. There's a difference between sobbing onto someone's shoulder because of what mommy or daddy did, a very important stage in the process, and sobbing into someone's shoulder because you're trying to push up against the limitations of your own cognitive faculties and your lack of understanding of the world. It's a very different conversation. So, where do we begin? Well, let's take it paradoxically back towards today's inner work question from Sharon, I believe. Let's see, hopefully it was Sharon. Yes, it was Sharon. Sharon's question today. My question is when starting with the cathartic purging, do we need to think about the trauma or how do we start? I started reading Peter Levine's book, Healing Trauma, and we'll look into the one you mentioned, but in that book, he mentions not going in head-on and uses the story of Medusa. I'm having trouble understanding how to truly start. Sharon, thank you for the question. It's a complex topic, because for people who've gone through very traumatizing experiences, either in regards to a childhood situation, a romantic situation, maybe even a violent situation as an adult. The nature of complex PTSD is that it is complex. It's multiple layers of frozen and dysregulated emotions, and what works for one person may not work for another person. For example, a young boy who gets into a car crash and then suppresses that down until they only realize 15 years later when they're in their 20s, I've got all of this pent-up emotion in my upper back and I can't really reach out and they've got this gesture of trying to protect themselves from the broken glass that's coming in, they have to go through a period of very sudden, expressive, expansive opening up gestures. Someone else who's got a complex PTSD kind of symptom related to being in conflict may actually need the purging experience of sitting completely still. They might need to sit on the meditation mat for half an hour with no words and no movement until they sob deeply because they've never truly sat with themselves for that long. Even when they're lying in bed, they toss and they turn and they think and they, they're always in movement. It's parallel examples. Someone who was traumatized by immobility might need a lot of action. Someone who's been in a traumatic overstimulated pattern of too much action is likely to need a bit of stillness. So where do we take it in terms of the initial entry point? I want to expand the conversation to different levels of being. There's the physical and the emotional element, which is frequently talked about in works like Peter Levine and his somatic experiencing, which is a wonderful therapeutic modality, which is gaining popularity. And I really do recommend that you study Peter Levine for yourself as well as Arthur Janov and Alexander Lowen, who I bring up in many videos. But we're missing the point when it comes to cognitive 
and existential or spiritual catharsis. To cathartically release means to purge or to express. It means to bring voice and to bring power to something which is festering inside of you and give it the full completion. What Peter Levine talks about is the idea of a gesture. So if someone who's been in a car accident, they maybe froze this gesture of crumpling in and protecting themselves, and because they were wrapped up in the seatbelt or it happened too quickly, they're frozen in this inability to actually defend. And you could imagine that even with this gesture here, it might be healing for them to go to a few MMA classes and learn how to take a bit of a block, because to, to do this repeatedly and realize that not only you can defend yourself, but actually you can come back and cause some damage in a consensual manner, that might be the cathartic purge. It can't really happen in a therapeutic space to that full extent. There's some things that you can do in the therapy session that will stimulate that gesture, and you could have someone lie there and do this, but I'd argue for that person in particular, they need to have the sense of coming back with agency, and the inverse gesture for someone who's way too frenetic in the environment, their gesture is the gesture of stillness and openness and calm. Different people need different things. I can't say to Sharon, this is how you start because I don't know your personal history. Someone who's gone through a certain type of abuse or a certain type of conflict or a certain type of anxious holding pattern will need something completely different from someone else. But I want to give a bit of a back draw, back door, side alley possibility which isn't really spoken about in these books. And that's the idea of working from the top downwards. If you're interested in ideas like the chakra system, it's the difference between going from root chakra level one and working your way up, as opposed to coming from level seven and going downwards. In some of the literature, this is called the reverse shaman initiation, where you work downwards into incarnation. It's just an idea. You can take it or leave it. I don't necessarily ascribe to the full reality of that way of seeing the world. But it's an interesting story. What would it mean for you to start with spiritual catharsis? For people who've had a difficult relationship with God, either because they grew up in an atheistic or overly religious household, either way too loose or way too dogmatic, it's usually the case they need to come to this existential, religious, spiritual, theological catharsis at some point in their life to actually integrate their personality. Carl Jung typically writes about this stage occurring in midlife, which, interestingly, if you didn't know about Carl Jung, the majority of his clientele, when he was in his prime years, were people over the age of 40, with the average age being something, if I remember correctly, I may be wrong on this, the average age was something like 51 or 52. So if you're ever reading Jungian ideas about active imagination and long, drawn-out therapeutic processes that focus on dreams and the imaginal realm and this wrestling with God kind of feeling, remember that these are typically clients in their midlife where they've sorted out the ego challenges of early life and they've got that time and that availability to be able to do that kind of open-ended exploratory work. There's a benefit to that, but those existential questions really do require that much time, which is why it fits within the Jungian paradigm. The existential catharsis won't be as simple as the physical completion of the car accident gesture, or the pushing away of the person who hurt you, or the sobbing and breaking down from the years of tears which have been pent up inside your heart. You need to cathartically progressive, oh, there you go, you need to progressively cathartically release through your entire life when it comes to the spiritual issue. You might get moments of revelation, and that idea or that word itself is quite interesting because a revelation is when something breaks through into awareness, something is revealed, something is truly opened up. And that's quite similar to catharsis. If emotional catharsis is the feeling of taking an emotion which has been frozen over or otherwise condensed and giving it an opportunity to break out, which is what we see with the hitting of the baseball bat or the screaming or the crying, the existential catharsis is the ability to break through the spiritual fog and have a moment of peak experience in one form or another with a book, with a teacher, with nature, or with a lover, or maybe all four at once somehow. Maybe don't turn your teacher into your lover and don't necessarily do things dirty to a book. 
jokes aside, the existential catharsis is something which will come in fits and bursts of revelation. There might be a mystical experience or two, but realistically that process is going to need much longer than the physical breakthrough of learning how to punch your way out of a trauma response. I'm simplifying. And Sharon asks the question of where's the entry point into the trauma work? Where can I open the door and walk into my own self-healing? Well, maybe we expand the conversation beyond the physical and the emotional and we look at the spiritual level. Or perhaps we go one level down and we focus on the cognitive or the intellectual. This is something that works particularly well for artists. And I find that when I'm doing mentorships with people who are professional artists, they will often need this double-threaded approach where even a single two-hour session has both the physical, emotional, cognitive, and spiritual cathartic elements all woven in together like a jigsaw that gradually builds up in three-dimensional space. One of those crazy ones that is like the, the ball where you have those jigsaws and they come out into an actual object. It's really cool to see this process happen as you guide someone through the multi-level kind of awareness breakthrough experience. Someone who's creatively gifted, let's say, to put it simply, they'll need a mental stimulation or an aesthetic catharsis before they can fully, and this is maybe controversial what I'm about to say, but I, I think it's true based on what I've seen. At the very least, they'll need some of this intangential kind of reality with the physical stuff. They'll need an aesthetic or cognitive or creative breakthrough which they can translate the physical experience into which is a very complex way of saying they need to have a symbolic imagination which makes sense or translates the physical gesture. For example, I was recently working with a young man who I'm sure is watching this video right now, so hello, you did great work, you know who you are, but everyone else, this guy's anonymous, and for a certain period of time, it was important for him to put on the weighted backpack and do a few ruck runs with weight on his shoulders to cathartically break through that feeling of being a little bit hesitant or not too courageous with taking on responsibility. There's the completion of the gesture when you put on the heavy backpack and you go for the run or you go for the jog and you're literally symbolically taking on the burden of your past and the future, the ambitions and the tragedies and you're learning that you can move through it. It's psychodrama and it's theatrical but the reason that it worked for this particular man is that he was such a cerebrally imaginative person that for me to just say, hey, look, here's the back work that you need to do. Let's open up your upper back and let's do something around the traps and let's get you grounded through the bioenergetic practices in the session in the room. That's not enough of a mythic story to capture the cathartic moment which wants to resonate throughout his entire identity. He needed the initiation or the cathartic breakthrough at every level of his being. And I don't necessarily know if this guy had a uh, spiritual revelation, maybe when going up the hill and the sun comes out and then he weeps uh, tears of joy because he's encountered God in nature. Maybe, idealistically, that could be a quite interesting moment. But at the very least, his body's getting a physical cathartic moment. It's heavy breathing. It's rucking through and it's really pushing past that threshold while activating the symbolic imagination. And if you follow me on Instagram, I'm sharing stories every week where I'll be doing pull-ups in the gym or muscle-ups or different types of particular movements and very strangely writing a caption about the symbolic importance of a puzzle-up. A, a, puzzle a new, new exercise right there. We're going to do puzzle-ups and they're going to be symbolically breakthrough experiences for everyone involved. You can do exercise in a whole new way and that's actually I think what the next video in this uh, series is going to be on. But let's wrap this episode up with this cathartic entry point. My number one suggestion is that you can't outsource your catharsis to what you see as popular. There is such a powerful thing as being in a group of men or women and the one man or a group of men or women depending on the circumstance or maybe a mixed group come into the center, everyone gathers around and you cheer them through a release or maybe one of those breathwork sessions that you've seen where everyone lies down and people are going through the spontaneous kind of they're tremoring and they're releasing, they're going through the trauma response. This is absolutely wonderful and I'm so glad that these spaces exist. But for some people, they'll need to be alone or they'll need to be in nature 
or they'll need to be in a space which really has minimal stimulus, or maybe maximal stimulus. Maybe someone could get the cathartic breakthrough in a mosh pit at a metal concert. They could also get the cathartic breakthrough sitting by a river with their hands folded in prayer. It depends on the temperament and it depends on the history. If you're understimulated or overstimulated, that already differentiates the cathartic path for you. If you're primarily visceral and physically oriented, if you're already quite alive in your body, then maybe go that way, or maybe alternatively, see what happens if you work your way down, and vice versa. If you're normally living up here, see what happens if you break through from the bottom. The reason that these group workshops seem to work so well for most people is that most people are disconnected, head-on-stick characters who spend too long in the office and too much time anxiously looping around on certain narratives. So the freedom to be playful or to be unapologetic with their bodies through silly movements or ecstatic dance or even very aggressive, very controlled and, of course, very therapeutic movements, that's what works. But what works for one person may not work for you, and what might work for you is unlikely to be all too apparent in these kinds of books. But we're trying to find the space in between, which is why it's a difficult conversation. You take the Jungian paradigm of working through the existential issues and the midlife period going forward. Some people start to do this in their 20s. I definitely started to do it kind of in my teenage years. There's particularly angsty, edgy, you know, trying to big question existentialist, like how smart I am kind of years, which we need not focus on too much because it's very embarrassing. But when that comes to maturity, there is something like an existential cathartic impulse or the gesture to reconcile your relationship with God and reconcile your relationship to the environment around you and who you are as an identity construct, which simply cannot be completed through learning how to throw a punch or simply crying. The symptom relief isn't the essential exploration of the root problem. It's up to you to decide how you approach and, of course, give yourself many months, give yourself many years and try many things out. If it doesn't feel safe for you to go into a group space, maybe that's an indication that you should find someone to work with one-to-one -one in your own home. If you don't want someone coming into your home, maybe you go into a group space. If you don't want to be around people at all, which, generally speaking, is honestly my own self-healing pathway, I've mainly healed through solo experiences, either being in the library with myself and active imagination, or through movement, or going out in nature and having a wonderful moment i mentioned in my last video about fasting and hiking through nature and without wo f food and water there's really a million different ways to do it tap into your heart tap into the pain and feel behind the tension so that you can find the right door for you to enter into and don't be too fixed on a particular method or a particular teacher because even though someone like peter levine is fantastic and even though I highly recommend that you read Arthur Janoff in his Primal Therapy, my genuine reality that I will stand by is the reason I've got probably 500 to 550 books in this room right now is that there's no single book. I cycle out the books every few months and remove old books that don't make sense anymore or they're not as useful, useful as a different book which does it better. There's hundreds of teachers, there's some repetition, but there's probably about 300 different perspectives from 300 different men and women in this room that I can call upon. And if you don't want to dogmatically latch on to, um, you know, breath work or group therapy or bioenergetic release or an existential active imagination approach, then that's actually a really good sign that you're maybe a little bit broader in your consciousness and you can understand that different tools for different jobs and different stories for different problems. And that's really such a gift to be inside because you're actually flexible with your self-healing and because days are never repeated you'll never get the same set of emotions or the same kind of experience of life on monday tuesday wednesday thursday it will always have different textures you need those different tools to be able to self-care and take yourself through that's up to you i've made many videos in this channel to show you where you can find those tools for the sake of cathartic release Remember that it's physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual. There's also sexual and creative elements, which kind of tie in between the lines. It's like 
sexuality exists um, as threaded through every level of, of your being, and so does creativity. It's a single video though, so I'm not going to try and do all of that. We will just go straight on to the next video where we're talking about dancing and fighting and why they will 400% increase your trauma healing journey. Right over here.